welcome. And as we're going into this worship through understanding time, will you pray with me uh, as we get into the message this morning? Father, we thank you for giving us the opportunity to gather uh, in a country that allows us to independently and to corporately worship you. And thank you for uh, our independence this morning. And we recognize that and we understand that only comes from through you and I pray as individuals that we will freely come together in mind, heart, spirit, and in strength so that we can experience your divine truth this morning through your message. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, again, let me say welcome to FPC. Uh, if you're new here, a first time guest, uh, my name is Drake, uh, lead pastor here at the church. And let me say this, we're so thrilled that you chose, I, I'm not talking to everybody here, we're <coughs> thrilled that you chose to be with us this morning because we do live in a free country and you have a choice where you want to worship or where you'd like to be on Sunday. So we thank you for being here. We truly appreciate it. Now today, we will begin our message in the book of Mark, Mark chapter 12 this morning. And I'll be reading a couple of verses, 32 through 34. Now, as you're turning there uh, in your Bible, or perhaps turning on your devices to get to your Bible app, uh, I want to say hello to our video audience uh, this morning. And as always, we're glad that you're able to leverage technology and join us. And let me say this, uh, let me encourage everyone who is viewing Facebook Live to go ahead and hit that share button to let other people know what we're doing here at the church. And again, thank you for tuning in and for being with us this morning. Now, I don't know about you, but um, I can't believe that it is July. We're six months into 2017. Now, all I can say is, oh my goodness, the 4th of July is here, Independence Day. So let me say this, happy 4th of July. And we mean that from the bottom of uh, our hearts here at the church. And the 4th of uh, always puts a smile on our face, or my face anyway, and as you know, I love to begin with a smile on our face, so with that, let's begin with a, uh, with uh, the spirit of delight, if, you, if we can, if you would allow me, I know you will. I heard about this nursery school teacher who took the opportunity to tell her very young class, about ages three and four, about patriotism. She said, we live in a great country. Now, the teacher announced to her young class that we do live in this great country. And she went on to say, one of the things we should be happy about, boys and girls, this 4th of July, is that in this country, we are all free. Now, little Johnny, he kind of looks like Pastor John over here. <laughs> A little boy in her class came walking up to her from the back of the room. And if you can recall, Grayson, this is who comes to mind. He stood with his hands on his, hip, on his hips like this, and he said loudly, I'm not free. I'm four. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Always good to start with a smile on <laughs> Our faces again. Happy Fourth of July. Well, today is the first uh, Sunday uh, in the month of July, and we look forward to just in a few days uh, to celebrate Independence Day. Now, Independence Day, also referred to as the Fourth of July, is all about honoring the adoption of the Declaration of in, uh, of Independence. Two hundred and forty. Anybody know? Sherry, that I'm sending. Two hundred and forty. One years ago, 241 years ago, and the Congress, the Continental Congress, if you will, declared that the 13 American colonies, I love saying American, American, I'm American, American, 13 American colonies were a new nation, the United States of America, no longer part of that uh, British Empire, if you will, and a crazy new love. Uh, for country and their new identity filled the countryside, filled the atmosphere of that day. And just like back then, today, right here, right now, we have a crazy new love. A crazy love 
uh, for reaching the lost in the good old U.S. of A. And embracing the lost so that we can share the gospel that gives a new identity to anyone who will receive it. And if they do receive it, they experience a crazy independence that only comes through Jesus Christ. This morning, we do continue, we continue our series called Crazy Love. And as I shared last week in this series, uh, we will examine the crazy way Jesus loves you and how he loves me. But today's message, crazy independence, or that crazy freedom that comes only through Christ that gives you a new identity. <coughs> now in this message, I want to talk to you about identity and how it brings an independence or a personal freedom to those who believe. So with that, read with me Mark chapter 12, verses 32 and 34. Now, before I read the content here, let me set up, let me give you a little bit of background. We're walking into a, the middle of a discussion that Jesus is having with Pharisees, the Sadducees, the uh, Herodians, uh, the Zealots, believers, a lot of people there. A very diverse uh, discussion going on. And uh, he's been having this for a, a little period of time now. But we get to the point where a teacher of the law asks a very familiar question. The question is this, which commandment is the most important? And of course, Jesus answers the question by quoting Deuteronomy chapter 6, where he says the most important is to love God with all of your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. And the teacher of the law was amazed. And this is where we enter into the scene <coughs> where the teacher of the law responds this way. And he says, well said, teacher. Now this is the teacher of the law speaking to Jesus. That's showing respect for Jesus there. The man replied, you are right in saying that God is one and there is no other but him. To love him with all of your heart, with all of your understanding, and with all of your strength. And to love your neighbor as thyself. Everybody say thyself. Thyself. Is more important than all the burnt offerings and sacrifice. The teacher of the law just recognized the brilliance of Jesus and said, you're right, Jesus. And all the things in the Old Testament, the sacrifice... Those aren't the most important things this is. Jesus recognized his attitude, his wisdom, that Jesus, so much that Jesus gave him attention. He says this in verse 34. He says, when Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And from then on, no one dared ask him any more questions. You are not far from the kingdom of God. Take that in. As a pastor, a person who has truly written about identity, specifically with the respect to the image of God and our identity in Christ, I have a lot of people who come to me who are lost. Let me ask this, the question this morning to our audience here in the sanctuary and also on Facebook. Are you lost this morning? See, if you haven't found yourself or have a personal identity through your maker and Christ, you, my friend, are lost. And I know most of us this morning, most of you know this, but I have a real heart for people who are seeking to find themselves or their identity. Why do I have a heart? Because if you haven't found yourself, this lostness, if you will, shows up in about every area of your life. It shows up in your marriage. It shows up 
at work. It shows up in your family. It, show, uh, it shows up in, in the church community. It just shows up nearly everywhere. Your lostness. Now, a lost person, excuse me, let me say this, a lost person looks lost. And they really never fit in. So a lost person really never becomes part of something that they want to be part of themselves. And I believe identity, which leads to a crazy independence, is a very important topic. Don't you? Mm -hmm. Got one, yes. <laughs> so today, what I want to say about this very important topic is this. Uh, this topic regarding, in the, or excuse me, uh, identity is echoed throughout the Bible and shared by great people throughout all ages. Now, the Bible, especially uh, the books of wisdom, and let me even get more specific. The book of Proverbs shouts, know thyself and know your identity, who you belong to. By the way, this is the number one principle when it comes to leadership. Know thyself. I talk to many leaders and I ask, what is the number one principle of leadership? And they come up with all kinds of different principles, but many of them miss the mark when it comes to know thyself. If you can't lead yourself, how are you going to lead anybody else? Anybody else? So know thyself. Now, before I move on or move forward with this message, let me make one thing very clear this morning. Before you can know yourself, I mean truly know your identity, you must know God. Now, I didn't say know about God. I said know God. God is the great I am who gives identity to all people and all things to include you and to, and to include, include myself. It's that simple. But as you know, the fall of man took away the simple things and brought in chaos and made everything a bit crazy. So much so that God had to send himself uh, to us to show us the way. And when God embodied himself, this is known as the incarnate God, Jesus, he began his ministry knowing his identity. What do I mean? He knew where he came from. He knew what he needed to do. And he knew where he was going. Our Lord and Savior, the one we are to emulate, the one we are to be, uh, uh, who is our leader, he is the example. And he knew his identity and he knew where he, was, where he came from, what he was doing, and where he was going. John, 5, or excuse me, John 8, 58 gives testimony to this thought. Jesus said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, look at the next two words, I am. Am. Before Abraham was, I am. Let me ask you, do you know your identity this morning? Your I am of who you are, where you came from, what you are doing in this life, in your ministry, and do you know where you are going? Yes, you might know that you're going to heaven, but do you know where you're going with the ministry that Jesus has given you? If you are a Christian, let me say this. You need to understand your I am of who you are. Why? Because, again, Jesus is our Lord and Savior, and you are an extension, a branch of the great I am. Your I am or your identity is part of the great I am. Your identity in the plan he has for you is your identity in God, or is it otherwise? Now, knowing yourself, your identity, the I am of who you are should be priority number one in your life. Again, why? Because once you can know yourself, your identity, then you know who you are, you know where you came from, 
and you know where you are going. And if you can put these three things together, I believe you're going to have a pretty good sense of self-identity through Christ. And why is this so essential? It's quite simple. It's not until I know myself, the <coughs> I am of who I am, I can't know you. It's just impossible or impossible. This is why, here, here's the whole point of the message here. This is why the great commandment says, love your neighbor as yourself. Crazy love, I know. You see, the degree that I love me and what God has made me to be is the degree that I will love you and who God made you to be. The degree that I know me is the degree that I will know you. Not because I'm selfish, please hear that this morning, but because it, it, it all begins with me as a base, small b there, the base, the image of God and in the image that I've been created in. It is from me, think about this, it is from me that everything flows to you. So from me, I know who I am, I'm secure, and I'm confident in who I am. Then guess what that does to you or what that gives to you? Security and confidence. I'm going to tell you this. An insecure person, or better yet, an insecure Christian, never gives confidence to another person. You think about it, an insecure leader never gives confidence to his or her people. So a person or a Christian who does not value themselves never gives value to other people. Here's something you can mark down, memorize this. You cannot give something that you do not have. Amen. It is. So it is your identity, the I am of who you are, that is the base or the foundation of who you are. And it is here that everything you do and everything uh, you say goes forward. Think about that. Every word, every thought, every action. So here's my point. God wants this for you. And of course, we want this for you. So let me encourage you in this way. Not only does God know who you are, He created you for greatness. And He gave you His image, that identity, and He gave you gifts desires, abilities, personalities, and experiences so that you can fulfill your part of His plan. And if that's not believing in you, I really don't know what believing in anyone really is all about. So God gave you beliefs from Him to you. And now all He is asking of us is to have belief in ourselves through His plan. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Now I trust this identity. I trust that this identity message will cause you over the next few days to reflect. So falling uh, in love with, let me say, who you are. I mean crazy in love like the series talks about. Because God already has. Take that in. So fall in love with what you can do because God has already given you everything. <laughs> God has already given you everything. Think about it. If your creator if you, Everybody said amen. Amen. <laughs> 
<laughs> if your creator did that for you, come on, let's do this for ourselves. How's that sound? That's what I was trying to get at. Now, let me say this. Quit listening to the religious people or the religious advice that is out there. Stop listening to the secular, and I'm going to quote my wife here, the secular garbage and hear the voice of God. Amen. Amen. So with that, <laughs> let me get beyond that. Let me give you a few pointers to help you along as you fall crazy in love with God and the identity that is given. And let me say this. If you can believe in the identity he has given you and and you can put these pointers in place, I promise you, uh, you're going to experience a crazy independence, a personal freedom that only comes from God. So with that, understand this. Now, I'm talking to the Christian. This is somebody who has accepted Christ. That means you've made a commitment. You said, you know what, Christ, just like I shared with the young people, I make my, uh, my life, I give my life to you, and I make a commitment to have your mind, to have your heart, to have your spirit, to have your strength. So once that is in place, you've accepted Christ and your identity. You might not know your identity, but you know there's an identity out there and you're going after it, uh, is in place. Then here's a few pointers to help you develop and to grow along the way. The first person, know this, once you accept Christ and you're on this journey, the first person you need to know is yourself. Why? Because this will bring self-awareness and allow you to put the right things or the proper things in place so that you can experience the fruit of the Spirit, specifically the fruit of self-control. You think about it, to love God with all of your mind, are your thoughts controlled by the Holy Spirit? To love God with all of your heart, mind, and soul, your spirit, your attitude, your tone of who you are. Is that controlled by God or is that controlled by your own personal experience and your own ways? Or is it controlled by Jesus' way? It amazes me how people uh, have the ability to size up everybody uh, in this world and even attempt to control them. But when it comes to themselves, complete failure. You must know thyself if you want to bring value to others. Love your neighbor as yourself. As I've already stated, you can't give what you don't have. Point number one, you need to know thyself or yourself. Point number two, the first person you must get along with is you. This point is essential to have a healthy self-image through Christ. If you think bad, unhealthy, negative thoughts about yourself, I'm no good. Listen, this is why I have a hard time with uh, the church today. They're focused on the wrong thing. You're a sinner. You're a sinner. You're a sinner. You're a sinner. Yes, you are a sinner. But don't focus on the sin. Focus on heavenly things. Amen. Oh, my goodness. You can understand that. So with that, know this, that the first person you must get along with is yourself. So please focus on the heavenly things when it comes to yourself. Reject those earthly things. Point number two, the first person you must get along with is you. Point number three, the first person to cause you problems, especially when it comes to the spiritual problems, is you. Listen. Admitting this truth yields self-honesty, humility. You never win when you play the blame game. You only whine. Mm. Oh, can I repeat that again? <laughs> Maybe repeat that one again. You never win when you play the blame game. You only whine. Quit blaming everyone else for your problems. And whatever your problem, be it internal or external, have the spirit of resolve rather than the spirit of criticism. Amen. First and foremost, you are the cause of most of your problems. The reason many Christians are unhappy today is because they refuse to have the mind of Christ. 
the reason your heart hurts all, the time, I would say most of the time, not necessarily all the time, is because your motives are typically <coughs> wrong. The cause of the bad attitude or the spirit or the tone that you bring to most experience is due to incorrect priorities oftentimes. Quit complaining about your problems. Know this, complainers drag down people, drag down the confidence, drive, and the morale of everyone around them. Now, as a first sergeant in the military, part of my responsibility was to make sure that the atmosphere was conducive with carrying out the mission. I don't know if you knew that or not, I was a first sergeant in the Air Force, and the thing I was vigilant about was attitudes and these uh, negative people that came around that brought the entire squadron down. Why? Because it only takes one person. My responsibility was to say, be gone. Because we have a mission. And for us in the church, it is to carry out the great commandments and the great commission. Here's the resolve, by the way, to that problem when it comes to you. You ready for this? Write it down. Love God with all of your heart, with all of your mind, with all of your spirit, and with all of your strength. That's it. You are the first person to cause you problems. Please understand that. Now, the first person, this is the last point I'll bring up and then I'm finished. The first person you must change is yourself. Now this empowering attitude paves the way to be a disciple and to develop yourself into the person that God needs you to be. Famous quote out there is, everyone thinks of changing the world, but no one thinks of changing themselves. Said by a famous writer, Louis Picard, I believe his name is Louis Tolstoy. Listen, church, it's time we claim and apply Romans 12, 2, which says this. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed. That word means change by the renewing of your mind. When you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, God's identity for you, what his will is for your life, his good, pleasing, and perfect will for your life. Point number four, you first, the first person you must change is yourself. Four points to help you understand you as you fall crazy in love with God. That's the whole point of this series. Now, just as Jesus responded to the teacher of the law, who answered wisely, let me say this to you. If you receive the message this morning and apply it to your life, you're not far from the kingdom of God. You're not far from the kingdom of God. First and foremost, I'm speaking to those that are lost in the sense that they do not know Christ. You're not far from the kingdom of God. But for you that are Christians and that you understand, love God with all of your heart, mind, and soul, small k here, you're not far from the kingdom of God. That fulfillment that you're seeking as a Christian, as a follower of Christ. You're not far from the kingdom of God. So again, let me say this. If you can believe in the identity that God has given you, I promise you will experience God's crazy love and the crazy independence he has for you. Crazy love and crazy independence this morning. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.